I'm here once again. My name, as usual, is Desmond, Director of Engineers at Royal Kingdom Estate. This series is captioned the A to Z of building a home. I'll be taking you on a journey. We will be looking at various aspects of construction. Why do I have this on? Is it for beautification? Or is it for a purpose? Where are my reflectors? Where are my goggles? What shoes do I need on site? What is it about when it comes to construction? I'll be taking you on this journey. We'll be breaking down construction, answering all your questions on security, on construction needs, and everything that you need. Stay right here, stay with me, and you shall love it. I will start off with the very basics when it comes to building a home. As usual, before you can be able to start building a home, you need one thing and that is the land. Without your land, you are unable to achieve anything. In my next episode, I will talk about what goes into the acquisition of land. Due diligence, registration, and all that you have to know when it comes to getting the land. But for today, I want to talk about something very interesting. I would dub it the difference between the building chain and the building team. The highest, most important person when it comes to construction is the client. Yes, you don't know that. You're the most important person in the chain. The client is the one who will tell you, I have my money, I want to build a condo, I want to build a villa, I want to build a community, I want to build a skyscraper, whatever it is, it is the client who is the highest person. What a client does is this, he will now choose his next person, which is always the architect. The architect comes first. It would interest you to note that as we speak today, we have draughtsmen who call themselves architects. There is a vast difference between an architect and a draughtsman. The draughtsman designs, draws, but he does not oversee the project. The architect oversees the project from the beginning up to the time that the key is handed over to the client. So the client's first point of call is the architect. The client will tell the architect what he wants. I want a three bedroom story building. I want to have uh, a kitchen, an open kitchen. I want to have a study. Whatever you need, you tell your architect. Now the architect designs, gives it to his draughtsman, for the draughtsman to put the designs together, submit it to him. Then he will bring it back to the client until the client is satisfied with the 3D, 3D animation, architectural drawings, and all that it takes. That is when the actual construction starts. So the next question, is the architect going to build your house? No. He isn't going to do that. The architect now has to get what you all know as a contractor. And in this episode, I will limit myself not into government contracts and higher buildings, but we're looking at just you building your three bedroom, your five bedroom, and we will be able to get it from there. The contractor comes in. The first thing he's supposed to do is to start working on costing. So in other angles, when the architect is done with his design, 
the first person he hands over the documents to is a quantity surveyor. The quantity surveyor will be able to quantify to the client whatever he is supposed to do. In fact, for the purposes of timing, I wouldn't want to bore you with so much. Today, I will end with the quantity surveyor. The quantity surveyor will do two things. One is called the material schedule. The other portion is called the bill of quantities. The material schedule will not change. The bill of quantities will change. How would that one change? It changes with time. If the contract is supposed to last a year and there is a delay, there will be hikes in materials, hikes in prices, hikes in labor, labor force and all. So those ones are likely to, to change. But if the QoS is able to quantify that perhaps you may need a thousand bucks for the project, it's a thousand bucks that is going to happen. So the QoS presents his quotation to the client, which will now be a guiding force for the client to be able to know who he will hand over his project to. Then he starts what we call tendering. He can choose to get three, four, five contractors to come and build for him. Here again, we can, he can choose to do competitive building or open building, uh, sorry, bidding, not building, forgive me. Whether it's closed bidding or competitive build, uh, bidding. Now, when the two people come or the contractors come, they go back to their own QS. They are finished with only the material schedule. They will never get to see the bill of quantities. It's only the client and perhaps the architect who may have those information. When he brings the information or when they bring the information back, then the client in consultation with the architect will go through the various tender documents that have been presented and they'll be able to make meaning out of what they have brought. Some of their costings may be higher than what the, the, the client QS has given or may be lower. How do you make a choice? It can be slightly higher, which is accepted, or slightly lower, which is accepted, or the same rate as the QS may have given you. But if it is too high or too low, it's equally dangerous. I'll end my series on this one for today. Thank you very much. See you here some other time. Have a blessed day.